Morning pot pickers, how are you today? Hope you're all well. Weather's really, really turned cold and I'm doing what I can to push off the cold. Scarfed up and trying to get a reasonable amount of sleep to stave off uh, the dreaded lurgy. Well, this morning I'll be doing a smoke of some Dunhill Flake, sorry, Dark Flake, and this one goes up to Josh. He knows who he is. In the LCS Rhodesian. This pipe has already seen a lot of action. So there's Dunhill Dark Flake. This is some of the uh, last Dunhill, Dunhill uh, batches. This is from uh, GQ Tobaccos and it's from January 18 I purchased it. So one would guess that it's uh, made sometime in 2017, I'd assume. And as the name would suggest, the flakes, dark. For the most part, there are some lighter bits in there, lighter bits of tobacco, possibly, uh, well, presumably bright Virginias or possibly even Burleys, I don't know. Um, the tin note is, is quite um, sort of like chocolate raisins. It's quite deep stewed fruit. The touch of sort of dark fired smokiness to it, earthiness, a little bit of fermenting fauna, mulch. Um, the, the, the consistency is one of like very sort of approaching chocolate brownie, so it's quite um, well, you can see if you look at the, uh, if you look at the texture there, you can see the dark bits is, are really quite, sorry, my fingers are a bit knackered after the pipe work that I've been doing. I should really wear my gloves more than I do. But I find that when I'm sanding especially, I need to take my gloves off so I can feel the surface of the pipe as I'm sanding it. Um, anyhow, so that's the way the tobacco looks. And we'll get it lit shortly. Well, I've been smoking this dark flake for a while. Problem is that um, I ate something before which is quite, it's kind of overtaken my palate a bit. And I can't really get my head around the flavors properly. So it's not gonna be the best opinion about this uh, dark flake. May well have to do this one again. I did tell Josh that I would do it this morning. So, I'm gonna be a man of my word. So the aroma in the tin, as I said, was very sort of raisiny, chocolate raisins, chocolate covered raisins kind of thing. Initial flavors that I'm getting is tobacco. And that might sound obvious, but some, most tobaccos most blends, you, you get a particular flavor which is forward. This one, you get tobacco. There is a sweetness there as well. It's not a million miles away from the Scottish cake that I tried yesterday, the Robert McConnell Scottish cake, in terms of the sweetness. And there's a tanginess there as well, a richness. In terms of the sweetness, it's, it's to me, I would say that it's um, 
again, I'm, I'm sorry, I haven't looked online to see what the contents are. <clears throat> but to me, it tastes like Virginia's with a small addition as a condiment of uh, some something like dark fired, um, something like that, that kind of idea, which gives it a very slight spicy smokiness um, together with the sweetness from the Virginia's. And it's those two flavors together which produce the top note on this uh, tobacco for me. As I said yesterday, I find it very hard to describe the sweetness, you know, some people, some, some, some tobacco, some blends, the sweetness has a very distinct flavor and you can match it with something else in life. So for instance, you might say something has a cinnamon flavor or it might have a burnt sugar flavor, you can relate to that. Um, on this blend, and the same with the Scottish cake, um, I found it hard to compare it to something in particular. It's just like a smoky, spicy sweetness. And not smoky, Latakia smoky, just a, um, like a, how can I describe it? The type of smokiness that you get, for instance, when you make a barbecue and you chuck in those little wood chips to give it flavor, it's that kind of smokiness. So you, not, not the barbecue smokiness, but the little wood chipping kind of smokiness that makes any sense at all and mix that in together with some sweetness I don't have a very broad palate in terms of all the different spices that are out there you know knowing the difference between what say I don't know take any spice I don't know car cardamom or something like that on its own what it tastes like obviously you eat stuff in food <coughs> But it's very rarely on its own. So um, I don't have a broad palate, experienced palate when it comes to individual spiced flavors. But I think um, a good way to describe it is like I said, this uh, Scottish cake, similar kind of sweetness, but without that burly, cardboardy dustiness that you get from burly sometimes. Although as I got towards the end of the bowl yesterday, I did feel that I was getting a bit of a cocoa flavor from, that, uh, from those burlies. I do find that there's a little bit of a, a, a an anesthetizing effect on the tongue. It's not actual anesthetic, but sometimes you get that sensation on your tongue where it feels like a little bit like that. You get that with some blends, and I'm getting it a little bit with this blend. You know, Dunhill Flake, the regular flake, used to be known as Light Flake. And the powers that be said that they couldn't use the word light because it made it sound attractive that it was perhaps less harmful or less uh, tobacco-y or nicotine-y. So they had to do away with the light. So it's called Daniel Flake. Um, I remember when I first started smoking a pipe, I tried both the flake and the, and the dark flake. And I think in the first instance, I think I preferred the dark flake because in those days, my palate wasn't quite uh, tuned into the, the nuances and different flavors of tobacco. Certainly not like it is now. Uh, I'm not saying I'm particularly tuned in more than anybody else, but I certainly wasn't tuned in very well at all um, early on, as you might expect. And the light flake to me just sounded, tasted like um, cigarettes at the time. Um, just the tobacco flavor. Whereas the dark flake had a little bit more punch to it, a little bit more flavor. As time went by, I started to prefer the light flake because I, the, the regular flake because I was getting 
um, those nice comforting bready notes um, the sort of the nice sweetness that was coming through in a very subtle smooth kind of way a smooth blend it is a smooth blend the dark flake by comparison is richer it's tangier it has those bready notes as well Um, but it definitely has a, a, a more pronounced richness and tanginess to it. Um, I wouldn't compare it to things like uh, Rich Dark Flake, Stonehaven, that kind of thing. It's, it's, I personally don't see any comparison at all um, in those particular flakes, which is what somebody suggested. I find that Rich Dark Flake or Stonehaven, which are extremely close, um, essentially the same blend by Germain's, I find that to be a much more, have a much more pronounced muscaty sweetness. I've often called it the champagne of tobaccos because it has, when you have your jar uh, of Stonehaven or Rich Dark Flake, um, sitting around for I don't know how, how long, however long it is, and you open the jar, the, the initial um, waft of aroma to me is one of a very sweet, muscaty, sparkling wine. Champagne type of thing. And the flavour is quite like that as well. Not as intense, but it's definitely got that kind of flavour. is much less uh, delicate and refined. Um, the Dunhill Dark Flake has got that ni a nice sweetness, but it's just different. It's not as delicate and nuanced. It's more pronounced. I think perhaps Stonehaven or Dark Flake, which Dark Flake, you'd probably want to sit back in your favourite armchair and just really smoke it in a very relaxed situation and really savour each puff whereas dark flake you could smoke um, like I'm doing when you're driving or when you're working you could smoke it really anytime and you'd get those flavours because they are more robust I say that often about full Virginia flake from Samuel Goeth that it's a, 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 a tobacco that needs to be savoured in order to appreciate the nuances of that blend. If you just chug away at it, you get nothing from it, at least in my experience. Not quite so much with Rich Dark Flake and Stone Ape. You will get uh, an enjoyable smoke even if you don't sit in a in your cozy armchair, even if you are doing other things. Um, so it's kind of, you could grade those um, you could say, to me, to my palate, full Virginia flake definitely needs to be savoured in a relaxed environment. Stonehaven would be, and, and rich dark flake would be the next one up, somewhere in between. And then something like dark flake, you could, um, I think, smoke any time and appreciate its flavours. Uh, with any tobacco, you'd appreciate the flavours and your answer is better if you're relaxed. But there are plenty you can enjoy sufficiently enough without having to sit back. And Dark Flick is one of them. A few people have been talking about uh, 9 mil filters. Mike at Briar Blues has been talking about it and Mel. Art. You all know my position on 9 mil filters, which uh, has been now for nearly two years. How time flies. And uh, Mike is absolutely right. You know, people should just do whatever they want. We say it all the time in all areas of life. People have asked me in the past, they want to start a, a YouTube channel. What should they talk about? And I tell them, 
whatever you whatever interests you. You know, you're never going to please everybody. Just please yourself. And there'll be plenty of other people who are like-minded. And it's the same with filters. If you prefer to smoke with a filter, just smoke with a filter. People have tried to tell you you need to smoke with uh, a filter. I have it even with uh, pipe making. People, when I might uh, sort of put up a picture of a pipe of a certain shape, and uh, say for instance a billiard, um, and it doesn't conform to the precise uh, proportions of an official billiard, I'll get messages, people posting responses saying, this is not a billiard, this is blah blah. Who cares? You know, just do whatever pleases you. As long as you're not offending anybody, as long as you're not hurting anybody, just do whatever pleases you. There's no need to look for approval from anybody else. Because if that's why you're smoking a pipe, is for other people, then you may as well not follow. Anyway, that's me for now. I'm in the middle of making a pipe at the moment, uh, a billiard type. God forbid I should say billiard, but it's not quite a billiard. Um, but um, I've actually left it staining, I've left the stain on it overnight. and see what difference that makes in terms of contrast staining. And we'll see how that all turns out hopefully later on today. So for now, I wish you all a wonderful day, enjoy your smokes, and I'll catch you on the next one.